we're going to start tonight on this. Let me tell you how we're going to do it. Uh, you probably, if you looked at the um, time lapse, you saw it a little bit. But we're going to paint the sky first. It's going to come down about two-thirds of the way. And it's just going to be basically light blue and some clouds and stuff. Then we're going to do the grass, uh, just the basic green. And then we're going to do the back trees and then this big tree and then the swing and then these little flower thingies. So it, there's nothing in it that's really hard. It's just um, getting it on there in order. So we're going to start with blue and white and a tiny, tiny bit of red um, so that we can get a, a little bit of a purplish color. So you want to have just some blue and some white. My white's going to come out. There we go. All right. And a tiny bit of red. I'm new, trying a new lighting thing tonight, and so everything around me is dark, except for right here where I'm painting. So if I act like I'm groping around for stuff, that's why. So we're just going to take the blue and a little bit of white. Just kind of, you don't have to blend them together too much. Just kind of like this, and then just start painting. Now remember that your sky will be a little bit darker up toward the top and it gets lighter as you go down toward the horizon. So you're just going to go back and forth like this. You can take it and dip your brush in a tiny bit of red and get a little bit of red up here with some blue. And you want to use a lot of paint. Just streak it in because we're going to come back and use our blending brushes in a second. So we want to cover this fairly quickly. Don't worry about trying to make it look like there's clouds or anything. Just get some streaks in it. And then I want you to take either your blending brush, or if you don't have a blending brush, you can use your big wide brush. Either way. And we're going to do some blending. What we're going for actually is kind of a stormy cloud uh, bluish uh, color, purpley color. So you know, put a little bit of red in there like that just to get it going. And don't worry about it being streaky or anything. Then just take your uh, blending brush or your other one and just barely touch the paint and start down here at the lighter part and you're just going to start doing little circles like this. Don't blend your colors too much together, but if you do this circle, you're going to get the feeling of, of clouds in there. So as you go across your streaky part, it just ends up like this. And you can see how you've got a little bit of stuff in there that looks kind of like cloud. Keep using your blending brush or your wide brush, but we're going to keep going in the circular motion. So. Put it a little bit in the white so you get a little more white. Tiny bit, just barely dip it in the red. You can keep using your blending brush and you want to start doing this so that you get some clouds in the background. And they should be different, different shades of blue and everything. We're not worrying too much about um, the shape of them because the suggestion is going to, but you want to see, see how I have this white and uh, it's a little bit shiny with all the lights on it. but. There's a lot of white right in here that you can, you don't have to blend in too much. Just swish it around and then you get a little more purpley color in here in some of these clouds. So if you want to get them a little more purple, just take, dip your brush in a little bit of the red and just blend it in too. I'm going to switch back to my other brush, my regular wide brush, and you just do this kind of thing. So that you can get some clouds in. Just do circular motions and make them irregular. Clouds are real, are irregular. So you just want to put in some billowy clouds back here. It's like a, when we were in Vermont, there was one night where the sky just got kind of purpley with the clouds and everything. And, and uh, 
was so pretty and it just made the made the trees around just kind of pop out so you're doing a little bit of this you can put a little more dark blue in some spots to make the clouds fade but this is just this is just real free freehand cloud the sky isn't going to be the focus so we don't have to make them super in fact if you look at the whoa i just painted my chair if you look at this uh you can see how the clouds are just kind of in the background back there so i need to wipe off my chair hold on a minute uh, i got so smart the other day i was wearing a new shirt <laughs> and i thought i can paint without getting any paint on my shirt so I painted away and I didn't get any paint on my shirt and then I sat down in my recliner for a minute and looked down at my shirt and there's a big blob of white paint on it. I don't know where it came from. And it was already dry. So I spent a few minutes trying to get that off. I thought I really got to just stick to a couple of shirts when I'm painting and not try and be a smart aleck about it because I always get paint on myself. You can see my clouds are kind of messy. You can tail them off a little bit on the bottom if you want to to blend them in a little bit. But like I said, a lot of this is going to be covered up so don't spend a lot of time on it. Just take a couple more minutes and then we'll move on to the ground. You can always touch up the parts of your sky that are showing after you've done the rest of the painting. Kind of relax your hand a little bit and just let it go in little circles. Don't try and don't try and uh, draw the clouds. You don't want to draw them. You just want to kind of let them float into the picture a little bit. So just think think in terms of floating. You're floating the paint in and you're using your hand in kind of a floating motion. Don't don't mash down too hard on it or anything. No, it doesn't start with a T. It has a T in it. That's why they're called lenticular clouds. Lenticular, and they usually form around the mountains. If you watch mountains, you'll see them because the wind gusts from the mountains sweep up and they create a flat bottom on the clouds. So you end up with a bunch of clouds that look like, let me show you here on this blank piece of paper. Now that I'm talking about lenticular, I think it's L-E-N-T-I-C-U-L-A-R, lenticular, something like that. Anyway, you end up with a bunch of clouds that look like this. Whoa, that's one of my grandson's art projects. Okay. These are my, this is, these are all my sermon notes from church. This is what I do during a sermon. <laughs> I sit and, yeah, Nancy remembers. I do all the, Yep, I do all these doodles and I take notes. Anyway, so lenticular clouds look like this. You have, um, they actually are shaped like this. And then you have another one that'll stack on top of it like this. And then they keep stacking. Sometimes they'll stack four or five clouds high but they just stack on top of each other and they're real smooth. The edges are real smooth and they're usually kind of uh, oval or stretched out oval shapes. They can be longer like that too. They're rare. I haven't seen them that often, but I have seen them around the mountains here. I got paint there. And uh, it's so cool when you see them. It's just, uh, it's a totally different kind of cloud. It's kind of fun. So they just stack up, these clouds just stack up on top of each other. I don't know if you can see that or not, but uh, if I did more shading, you could. But they will just stack up like this. And it's, as far as I know, it only happens around mountains. 
Okay, so what we're going to do next is we're going to do the grass. If you have green, you can use your green. If you don't have green, we're going to make green using uh, blue or black and yellow. So remember, use a lot of yellow and a tiny bit of black to start with. Now, we do want to start with kind of a, a, a darker olive green color. So you're going to take this yellow and you're going to put a tiny bit of black in it. And then keep adding black, but add black a tiny little bit at a time. Remember when you're mixing colors to start with your light color and then add the darker color to it. Because the darker color is stronger than your light color. And if you were to start with the black and start mixing yellow in, you would mix forever before you could turn that black into a green color. So you want to get kind of a, this kind of a green. And then off to the side, we're going to mix some that's a little bit darker. So we have different shades of green. So we got some that's a little bit darker. Just add more black to make it darker. And you can also add a tiny bit of blue to it. We don't want too much blue because we don't want to make it real bright. But if you add a tiny bit of blue, it brightens it up a little bit. And then the other color we'll be using is yellow, but we'll just kind of streak it in as we go. So we're going to start with these colors, and we're just going to streak them back and forth like this. And then you can go to the lighter green and blend it in. You just want to have lines across that kind of represent the different depths of grass. You know, grass, unless it's, unless it's freshly mowed grass, it pretty much has a lot of bumps and ridges in it. So you want to have your grass kind of like this. Just kind of a background. And we'll take some yellow and make this a little bit lighter than I did because we actually don't want the horizon or the back part to be darker than the front part because that throws the picture off. That makes the it look closer. So go ahead and put it back, push it back a little bit. You can do it with a little bit of yellow and also a little bit of white if you want to just push the this part up here back. Okay, so once you got that done, then we can go ahead and start on our trees. We're going to do the green trees first since we're working with green already. So take your middle-sized brush and, and dip it in the um, black. We want to make some more dark green for the pine, little pine evergreen that's back there. And he's about, he's a little bit to the right of center. So you're going to just do this. Bring it down. Jiggle your brush back and forth like this and it'll make a tree. And then you can put another one over here next to it that's a little bit smaller. You don't have to use more than one color on it. It's in the distance, so we don't see a lot of detail on it. Just zigzagging with the, kind of with the corner, the flat edge of your brush. So you're just going like this and just zigzagging to get the tree. So we're just going to do a couple of those. And then we're going to add some yellow to the green to get a more yellow green color. We're going to put 
just using, still using your medium brush, you're just going to tap in some suggestion of some green trees back here. So you're just going to tap in a few bushes, just like this. They're not very tall. And they can be a little rounded. And um, you want to put a little bit of a suggestion of some lighter green grass back there. So just make your whole grass down there kind of a, a lighter green color. So you can take your brush with a little bit of light green on it and you can just bring your little brush strokes up a little bit like this. And that gives you a little bit of tall grass back there. The yellow tree is behind the red tree. So we're going to do the yellow tree first. And what we're going to do with, to make the yellow tree is we're going to still use our medium brush. We're going to use the corner of it, but we're going to need some, to start with, we're going to take some red and yellow. I'm going to mix up kind of an orange color like this. And we're just gonna start tapping it in. And we're gonna start up about here. This is kind of a tall tree back here. And you're just gonna tap, tap, tap like this. Kind of how we did the flowers last week. But you wanna make it look like there's, you know, branches and things like that um, back here. So just tap it in. This is the background color. We're gonna come back in with some yellow in a second on it. So don't worry about it too much. Just make some, you know, or, uh, just make some background areas back here. So we're not putting any branches in right now, just the leaves. Okay, so it goes off the canvas over here. It's part on the canvas and part off, so make it go off the canvas. And then take your brush and dip it in more yellow and mix it here so that you get a lighter orange color and go back over this so you're going to go back over it you don't want to cover it all up because you want to leave some shadows in there so just tap it on top a little bit just remember how we did the flowers last week Then you're going to come in with, just keep your same brush, but just go straight to your yellow. And a little bit of white. And the reason we do a little bit of white with the yellow is because yellow by itself doesn't really cover anything. It's very difficult to cover things with just straight yellow. So do yellow with a little bit of white in it. Again, uh, the yellow will be kind of along the top edges, but, but there's yellow leaves all over the tree. So just, you know, let some of the bottoms of the branches be a little bit dark.
you really don't need to totally clean off your brush. You can just uh, go here. If you have some yellow on your brush, just mix it in. And we're going to add a tiny bit of blue to it. We want to get a purple color first to be the shadow color. So we want to add just a little tiny corner of blue to it to get to darken it up. And we want to add, uh, wow, I got too many things here. <laughs> I have a spotlight on the painting and another light on me and my phone right in front of my face. And I just tangled with my phone. Okay. Um, so we're going to put a tiny bit of yellow in with this. And we're going to add just a tiny bit of white, not much, just a little scoop like that. We want to get it to be red like um, maple trees are red, I think. What we're going to do at the very end is we're going to knock these back a little bit with uh, whitewash because they're in the distance and we don't want them to get more tension. If we don't knock them back, what's gonna happen when we're done with the painting is that everybody's gonna be staring at these two trees instead of the tire swing and stuff. So we wanna make sure that, that the tire swing gets the attention. What I do as a rule of thumb is I keep a whole bunch of lids, like I'll keep the I keep a lid off a water bottle, a cap off a jar of peanut butter, sometimes, uh, you know, different size circles. I just keep them. And then that way, when I, uh, when I need to paint a circle on something and I want it to be a good circle, then I, then I can use one of my, I can pick a, a cap and make my circle. So, and then I just put, I just added a little bit of the, a little more white to it just to make it pop a little more. We're going to mix up kind of a brownish gray. If you have a brown already, you can use it. All you need to do is, um, to start out with, you'll need to add a tiny bit of black to it. So what we're doing is, we're gonna start with a dark brownish grayish color. So if you need to mix a brown, you're gonna start with yellow and you're gonna take a scoop of red and a scoop of blue. Mix them all together and see what you get. <laughs> you never know. <laughs> okay, so I have kind of a brownish greenish color here. I'm gonna add a little more red to it to brown it out a little more. So if you have, if you have too much green in it, add a little red. If you have too much blue in it, you can add some more yellow. Then add a tiny bit of black to it so that you get a darker brown. So you want to get a darker darker brown. Well, I, I almost put too much in there. I better mix some more brown in. So you want to get a color that's kind of this real dark. So this is kind of a brownish greenish color, which means I probably need still a little more red in it. Okay, that's better. Okay, so this tree trunk is going to be sketched in. It's going to start right over here. About, about an inch and a half from the bottom. And it's going to go all the way up 
Do not try to make it a totally straight line because it's a tree trunk. It doesn't have to be totally straight. But you want to go all the way up. And then when you get to the top, you kind of want to curve it over a little bit like this. So you're going to kind of curve it over. And it needs to be a couple of inches thick. So you're going to make a big old thick trunk. Don't be afraid to... I think a common mistake people make when they're painting is they're afraid to make things big. And so uh, a lot of times you'll get little things like little flowers and little, uh, you know, little things. Because, and I think that just comes, I'm not sure where that comes from, but I think that it's less intimidating to paint something smaller than it is bigger maybe. So you're doing this whole tree trunk like this, just a big old brown tree trunk. And he swerves off this way, because this is gonna be the suggestion of where his branch is that the swing is hanging on, but we don't actually see that branch. So he just kinda goes off that way like that. So once you've got him in, we're gonna have the light coming from the left so this side of the tree is going to be darker so you just want to take some black paint and start running it up the side just go right into your wet paint with it it doesn't matter just put it on your brush and then you can stroke it in as you're going just do little brush strokes like this and stroke it in if it's a little streaky, don't worry about it. You want it to be streaky because it's supposed to be bark. And bark is rarely perfectly smooth. So just go in like this and put in your, your dark color. And then we go like this and just do some streaks on, all across the tree so that you show that it's got kind of uneven bark, but don't bring the black all the way to the left hand side so just put in some black streaks of paint let it look rough and uneven down here you can't see it because it's covered up by plants but there's like a little a little root thing right here where the the root comes out over it a little bit. So there's a shadow right there like that. And then you can make this go up. And do you see how here I just left some black along the edge? You can do that too and then that looks like a a little ridge in the tree so you just want to do that and then you want to stick your brush after that stick your brush over in white paint mix some of it with the brown you don't have to clean your brush off or anything mix some of it with the brown then you're going to do the same thing with this lighter color but kind of make it look like it has some uh, some lighter ridges in it which would be parts that are sticking out a little bit and then you'll come over here on this side and you're going to do a light streak down the side because that's where the light is hitting it's like it looks like i have a natural ridge here from where i was painting so what i'm going to do is just go ahead and Put a light, light ridge down there like that because you can see it. So there'll be different, different um, places where the light is hitting the tree, but mostly you want to keep your shadows on the other side. And we're also going to do a, one branch coming out of the side of the tree, which is about right here. It's not a big, it's not too thick a branch, but you can just take your, your brush and just go across like that. And then you're gonna come up here 
Let's see, I'm going to make the bottom part a little bit darker here. I'm going to make it a little thicker up here. And then it comes over that way. It's going to actually be kind of right here and you'll blend it into the tree trunk a little bit like that. So make sure you have enough paint on your brush. The bottom of this will be darker because the shadow is on the bottom. And you can make another branch that comes down like this off of this one. So it comes down this way and goes like this right in front of those pretty trees you did. And just make it get skinny as you get off. So there's going to be shadow right there. And we have some dark branches over here on the other side because they are on the dark side of the tree. So they are not very complicated. They should be almost black. another one down here and these are just pretty much straight lines and another one down here your branches don't have to be exactly where mine are I'm just giving you general guidelines you can don't worry about it if your branches are in slightly different places then use your use your medium-sized brush but when you wipe it on the plate wipe it back and forth until you have let's see if I can get it here where you can see it have a real flat it's real flat like this that's how you can do skinny branches you're going to take it length lengthwise so you're going to point it like this and you're going to go sideways and you're going to go up like that and do a branch then you can do a little branch off of it another little branch off of it so you get the idea. You can just kind of lay in your branches the way you want to. And uh, make it look kind of interesting. They can overlap each other a little bit. That's not a big deal. Just keep adding some. We want to have a kind of a tangled branch, bunch of branches over here on this side. So just add some, run them on top of each other. And wherever you have a little bump, like I just got two bumps right here from running my brush back and, uh, uh, back and forth a little bit, you can make another branch come out. So that's what I mean when I say your brush can actually help guide where your branches are. Just by the way the the brush turns out. And you can go back in later and um, add some more highlights to your tree trunk and stuff. Just let it dry right now and then you can go back in and add stuff. So we can stop with the tree branches for right now and you can add more later. I want to get you going on the swing so that you have time to get that going before we have to quit. But you can just add tree branches as you're going along after you uh, see what it looks like. <clears throat> to do the, um, the leaves on this tree that are in the background is still the same technique that we did for the other, tr the, um, other trees over here. You see how, see how this has some leaves back here? You just do the same thing, it's just with green and yellow like we did the ground down here. So you can just go in and add tree um, leaves around here. They don't go all the way out, they only go about this far. I'll show you in a minute if we have time. But let's um, put our tire swing on for right now. So you need something that's circular that you can trace around. Or you can freehand it if you want to. I'm going to 
I'm going to go at it from the other way and I'm going to do the uh, middle part and circle and then I can just paint the rest of it around. So if you don't have anything big enough to do the tire, do the middle. So I'm just using a paint bottle and you want it to be about halfway on the grass. So you want to line it like this and then you just do a circle with, you can use a pencil or a sharpie. You just want to get a guideline in. Okay, so I have kind of a circle there now. So what I'm going to do, normally I would do the outer circle and paint the inside, but I want to make it a little bigger, so I'm going to paint it on the outside. And use your medium-sized brush still. And we're just going to do a, the tire right here. Don't worry if your brush goes a little wonky on you because we'll fix it as we go. But you want to paint it in with black. My black is a little watery. So that's why I'm getting a streaky look. It's not because I mixed any paint with it. So you just want to, it's, it's a little bit wider than a brush, than the width of your brush. So you want to do it one time around like the width of your brush. Painting a circle like this is not necessarily the easiest thing to do, but you can do it and then go around and just smooth out the edges where it's a little uneven. It does need to have a kind of a smooth edge because it's a tire. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make my inside circle a little bit smaller. The inside is actually a little bit oblong because you know how tires are hollow when you see the other edge. So right here you want to paint the other the other back side of the tire like that. And just leave that like that for right now. So then what you're going to do is you're just going to take some white and you're going to start adding in some little um, light and stuff on your tire. So you want to do some white like this and just kind of blend it in. It's going to be the highlights. We'll, it'll turn gray in a minute and if it doesn't we'll paint some gray over it. But remember the light is coming from over here so you're going to have your light up here on top and coming around this side right here. Okay. So it'll be on this side of the tire. It won't be on the bottom and it'll be on this side of the tire right here. And what, what you do with this little part over here where you can see the other side, the underside of the tire is you're going to make it black, which is really hard to do right now because it's all wet. But it's going to be black. One of the things that I did with this afterwards was I went in with a Sharpie pen and I outlined it. So that way you can get a dark, fine line going around the tire to make it stand out a little more. So that's your basic tire um, shape and everything. To do your rope, you're going to start it, you want to make sure it's centered above the tire, and you're going to get your brush like I was telling you before with your, to be real thin. Now you can use your skinny brush if you want, but you'll need to use quite a bit of water. I prefer to use my middle size brush. Put your finger on the painting to rest it so that you can help guide the brush and then you just go down like this all the way down 
to the swing and like that right on top of it and then you're going to put the other little part that's going on the other side behind it like this and since the light is coming in on the right hand side you'll go up here and you'll do just on the right hand side of the rope a line that runs right on top right on top of the edge of the black I don't know if I can get it here but remember to use your finger as a guide your your pinky finger as a guide on your painting and then you just bring it all the way down like this to make it lighter no that's too light like this Just bring it down and bring your rope over here and you do this knot so for that you just need some green actually take some yellow take your brush and this is the stroke you're going to do for it I'm going to show you the stroke so that you see how to do it you just lay your brush down like this and go up like that that's it if it comes out and you just make them all over the place here you can make them a little bit um, I'm gonna add a little white to it just to make it stand out a little more you go like this there you go and you have these little rush kind of things and you can make them some bigger some smaller and you just barely lift your brush up and it'll give you that little finished little uh, tapering off effect needs to be real pale so it needs to be a really pale green like this so then when you do it it comes out there that's better you want it to be a real pale kind of a green like that and you just do them all along here so they go over here in front of your tree and then there's some over here in front of your tire which if you check out the picture, the other one that I did, you'll see them. And then what you do after you've got them painted in is you just go in with a little bit of that darker brown color, mix it with the light green and just do this to make a stem. And you can make stems that are light green, dark green, whatever color you want, or different colors. So you're just doing a stem down from each one of these and then you can take light green and do this so you want to kind of mask the bottom of your tree so it's not totally just sitting on top of the grass so you want to go like this so you get some grass going up and you can even you know make some orange some little orange grass in there and um just bring the grass down a little bit like this but you want to kind of cover up the tree okay so what we're gonna do is and then remember to do this tree stuff the branches up here you just start with the darker green like I said before and you're just gonna you know do this like do this like you were doing with the other with the other ones just tap 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 it in and then come in with a lighter green okay so this this is the basics of what you need to finish it I'm gonna go ahead and finish this one and talk through it but I know some of you need to go to bed because it's late But 
watch what I'm doing. I'm going to show you how to do it. And then you can do it when, when you're pretty much done with your painting and it's very dry. Then what you want to do is get your medium sized brush. Make sure it's totally cleaned off. Totally cleaned off. And then you're going to have white paint. Oh, see, mine isn't. There we go. Okay, that'll do. Anyway, you want to get this paint so thin that you can see through it. And then I would test it on uh, like a, a piece of, you know, a piece of paper or something where, or on a part that you don't care too much about. But you can just test it and see if it's going to be transparent. Yeah, it is. Okay, so what you want to do is get it really, really thin, and then you're going to go back here in the back, and you're going to just fade this part out. Now, it looks weird, I know, but when you spread out the white paint, what will happen is it creates kind of a misty effect back here. And I usually rub it with my fingers to get it so that it's not too thick on there and you rub it around the edges so if I do that tree back there then I would rub it into the blue and the other thing you can do if you feel like you've got too much paint on there which I do a little bit is wet a cloth the corner of a cloth and just go like this and just wipe it very gently and it'll bring the colors out from behind the white but it'll still have the white on top of it so that it just knocks it back a little bit so it's not quite so bright because uh, when things are further away they're not as bright so um, if you've ever you know looked at a at an autumn hill or something uh, when they're far away the colors just kind of blend together that's what I mean by whiting out or um, knocking the color back and that way the color's there, but it's not competing for attention with the tire and the tree in the front. Because you don't want it to compete for attention. So you can run it down here on the, like this. And then you just take your wet cloth. So like I said, you don't do this until maybe, you know, you finish your painting and let it sit for a day. <laughs> and then you can come in and do this. And then you can... Just wipe it off with a wet cloth. You maybe could even use a baby wipe or something like that if you want to. Baby wipes do all kinds of magic on paintings. <laughs>